Hello and welcome to the Brilliant Perspectives Podcast with Graham Cook. I'm your host, Michael Vecchio. This episode is part one of two in our sixth installment of the Q&A with Graham series. In this clip, Graham addresses a question by brilliant family member, Patrick. In his answer, he describes discovering a newfound depth and grace in God in the midst of personal illness and hardship. Drawing from his own experience, Graham brings perspective on how we can engage with, realign with, and abide in God in such situations. He elaborates on how the Holy Spirit is a spirit of disclosure, making known unto us heaven's very thoughts and heart for our situation, and how the Lord, being our keeper, roots us in his provisional promises so that we can be purposefully enveloped in his redemptive and strengthening hope. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My question today is from Patrick, and he says, I live in chronic pain, prayed a zillion prayers, had a zillion anointed and prayed over me also. Nothing. Has God said no to me? I can't go on like this. He knows that. All I see are people who are not in pain. How do I go on? I really resonate with this question, uh, Patrick, if you're listening, because my own circumstances are very similar. 11 years ago, I was diagnosed with type 2 uh, diabetes, and in the process of undergoing tests, uh, they told me that my immune system was shockingly low. So for me, the last 11 years has been um, battling that chronic pain. Um, I don't like taking pharmaceuticals. This is just me. I don't like taking something that might cure this, but will have an adverse effect on that. So I, have a, I just have an agreement with the Lord that I'm not taking any pharmaceuticals. I take some herbal supplements and so on because... You know, I'm, I'm building up certain things in the store of my body. So, and I guess the only thing I can say to you right at the very beginning here is the Holy Spirit in you always makes a place of engagement. I like reading uh, John chapter uh, 16. Let me find it. John 16, 13, this is what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. And this is an incredible piece um, because nowhere in Scripture does God say the same thing in, th- in three consecutive verses. But he says it about the Holy Spirit. And he's done it that way in order for you to know that the, whole, the, the person of the Holy Spirit in your life is outrageously required and needed and God has provided. So Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Three times. Three times in three verses. That is unprecedented. And it shows you how important it is that you hear from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the conduit from heaven to Jesus in you. And and therefore, it brings you into a place of knowing because you're in the place where He is communicating all the time. The role of the Holy Spirit is to be your spirit of disclosure. That means the things that He's saying to you are a power in your life. They take the burden away. They bring you into a completely different place. And there are times in our life when the Lord wants to show us uh, 
what our life is like, regardless of what the world does, regardless of what our body does, regardless of what, pe- of what people do who are oppositional. This is what your inner life is like, regardless of any tumult or any upset. And so I did all the same things that you did, and I still do. I don't turn down prayer from people. Uh, If I'm in the presence of people who've got a healing gift, a healing ministry, I'll always say, I'd really appreciate it. You know, you don't have to go to town on me, but just lay hands on me and pray your best. Pray the prayer that means the most to you. That's what I want. So I never turned down a chance to pray or be prayed for. Some situations, though, they do require a promise from the Lord. You know, I, I'm, I've been on the front line in terms of ministry for over 40 years. Um, there isn't a day or a week where I'm not, you know, either burned in effigy or attacked in some way or told I'm a heretic or whatever. And, and I take Paul's view. None of that means anything to me. You know, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's what Jesus said. And Paul said, this is just a light momentary affliction. And so, but when you have a promise from the Lord, that promise creates in you a mindset, a way of seeing, a way of thinking, a way of speaking, a way of posturing yourself so that you know exactly what you are focused on day after day. And it depends really on what uh, he wants to be for you and what he wants you to become in him and what he wants to, how he wants to live in you through regardless of any situation. So his promise to me was Psalm 91. And so I'm going to read it to you from uh, the Passion Translation. Psalm 91. He gave me the whole psalm. And I love it. I often, the Lord asks me to read Psalm 91 to him. So I do. And even if he doesn't ask, I'll still read it to him if I want to. So (laughs) here we go. When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me, and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy, and he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing, whether by night or by day. Demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil launched against you. For God will keep you safe and secure. They won't lay a hand on you. Even in a time of disaster, with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they have done. When we live our lives within the shadow of the God Most High, our secret place. We will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, 
trampling every one of them beneath your feet. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. And you will find and feel my presence even in your time of pressure and trouble. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. You will be satisfied with a full life and with all that I do for you. For you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. There isn't a week goes by, hardly a day sometimes, that I don't read that out or read a portion of it out. In this time of uh, COVID, I am especially vulnerable because of diabetes and a low immune system. And uh, <clears throat> so that puts me on the danger list uh, for getting COVID-19. Um, so the, the particular verse that I talk to the Lord about every day is, with a long life you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. So, you know, when I feel up against it or, you know, everything's swirling around your head and I'm battling thoughts that I don't want to allow, this is my way of keeping all of that at bay. Lord, this is what you promised me. With a long life, you would satisfy me and show me your salvation. And I'm, sometimes I'm joking and just saying, so I kind of feel like I might like to be around for the next 50 years if that's okay with you. So that's my place where I stand. I have this promise and I read this promise out constantly. And there are some times when the Lord says, Graham, read Psalm 91 to me. And so I will. I'll walk around and I'll read it just like I read it. And then he'll just say, that's a great promise. I'm so glad you have it. And I said, and sometimes I say, Lord, you know, I could swap this one for a word about healing. <laughs> and he just laughs and says, I know. But Graham, I enjoy being your keeper. I like being with you in this. And this is not onerous for you because now you've discovered really how to abide in me. And when you abide in me, then you don't suffer any lack. I keep you every single day by my power. And so that's where I am. It doesn't stop me asking for healing or I pray for healing. I have a crafted prayer for healing every day. I pray it every day because that's good too. I'm, I'm not going to be saying, well, God is not going to be my healer. He is my keeper. I mean, I can say that, but the reality is he will be both. And I fully expect to get healed. But right now, in the last 10 years or so, I have been in a time of being kept by the Lord. And I have not lost out on any single thing. In fact, I think being uh, a keeper, being kept by God has brought me into a stronger place of abiding than I've ever had before without sickness. Because you know, when you don't have sickness, you're out there outrageously enjoying your health. But, but in this kind of like, paradox, this delicious tension of being in and of him. I'm learning so many different things about trust. And here's what I'm not saying. I don't believe God gives us an illness to teach us something. I think God actually takes advantage of every negative thing against us. People always say, well, why didn't God stop it? Well, maybe it's because he wanted to do something bigger and better. And that's, sometimes that's what I feel. I'm in this gorgeous place with the Lord where he is keeping me. That means he is attentive to me in my situation because I have a promise with him. I have a promise in him. And that promise will be executed by him in me. And so I have this place of 
radical intention and radical that requires radical attention from me you know in my weakness i am made strong and so what it's done for me personally is it's brought me into a place where the illness doesn't dominate me doesn't dominate me at all i mean i have flashes where it's really painful but then when it happens i will just it, they'll last for three or four minutes, intense spikes of pain. They're like, oh, my, my body is like rigid, and I feel the pain shooting through me. And then when it stops, I'll stand up, and I'll just rejoice. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that nothing can take me out before my time. Thank you that you are for me. Thank you that you are a keeper. You're my keeper. You just kept me through two or three minutes of intense pain. I'm still here, and I still love you, and I'm still walking with you, and so I rejoice in you. You are my keeper. And for me, it's, it's, like, it's like this constant, intense relationship with a person who adores me. And I'm realizing that there is nothing that's gonna happen in my life that can take me away from the power of his intention towards me to be my keeper. We'll continue the second half of this answer from Graham next week. Let's cover a few quick things before we wrap today. One of the things Graham said was when you have a promise, you have a mindset. Beloved, knowing God's intent in your life and in the matters you walk through changes everything. This is how we can live victoriously in Christ, above our circumstances, and inhabit the position of perfect peace that He's carved out for us. Take time to ask, listen, and consider what the Father's perspective is and the jewels that He wants to give you through the language of promise in the midst of adversity. Some of the promises and words from God that have left me the most astounded and dumbfounded have come during times of personal turmoil when it would have been quite easy to miss them because of the concerns, demands on my attention, and the temptation to think and pray from a place of anxiety rather than a place of expectation. We have a splendorous opportunity to know what He is like and how wondrous His heart is towards us when we encounter Him in the midst of our adversity. I think of precious gems like this, which Graham relayed today when the Father said to him, Graham, I enjoy being your keeper. I like being with you in this. You can discover untold riches in God when you walk through these narrow places with Him. I'll leave you with this for today until we return for part two of this episode next week. Peter exhorts all of us in the beginning of his first letter to the church, writing this, Now, for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which itself perishes though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Christ Jesus. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Be blessed this week, beloved. Thanks for tuning in.